It's day 22 of the war in Ukraine and the fighting is only intensifying. Take a look the, at these images first. <laughs> What you just saw were images from a war hospital in Mariupol. Ukraine security forces were trying to shift an injured man. They came under attack. In fact, hundreds of civilians came under fire in Mariupol today. They took shelter inside a theater. Then the theater was struck by missiles. And this is becoming a bit of a pattern. Bombing has intensified in all major cities. Let me show you what happened in Kiev today. Another apartment block was hit. One person died. Three were injured. Ukraine's army issued a fresh assessment. It says Russia's ground offensive has stalled and aerial bombings have picked up. And you don't have to be a military expert to know this. It's obvious. Bombs are falling left, right and center. At the same time, talks are on too. Talks between Ukraine and Russia. Today, Ukraine drew a red line for the Rus Russian negotiators. This is what reports say. Kiev will not accept any changes to its recognized borders. Ukraine's international border with Russia was demarcated in 1991. That's after the Soviet Union collapsed. And this is the border that Ukraine is talking about. Kiev wants Moscow to respect those boundaries the 1991 borders. In other words, Ukraine is trying to play hardball on Crimea, Donetsk and Luhansk. Easier said than done. Ukraine is in no position to play hardball. It needs more leverage. So its president, Volodymyr Zelensky, addressed the German parliament today. He made two demands from Berlin, more aid and assistance and Ukraine's entry into the European Union. When we ask for preventive sanctions, we appeal to Europe, we appeal to many countries, we turn to you, sanctions for the aggressor to feel that you are a force. We saw the days, we felt resistance, we understood that you want to continue the economy. And now the trade routes between you and the country that has once again brought a brutal war to Europe are barbed wire over the wall, over the new wall that divides Europe. Strong words from Zelensky. He's been parliament hopping, you see, addressing one Western parliament after another. To what end? A lot of applause and little else. But he did register a win at the ICJ. That's the International Court of Justice. It has ruled in favor of Ukraine and against Russia. Remember, Kiev had moved the ICJ soon after the invasion. The hearing began. Russia refused to send a representative. What was Ukraine's case? Ukraine wanted an end to the Russian offensive. And for whatever it's worth, the court ruled in its favor. Not like the Russians sought the court's permission before attacking. So this ruling is mostly symbolic. And it's not even the headline, frankly. The headline is this. An Indian judge at the ICJ ruled against Russia. Now, there are 15 judges here. 13 of them voted in Ukraine's favor. Two voted against. The Indian judge was among the 13. His name is Justice Dalvir Bhandari. He was elected as a judge at the ICJ in 2017. And that name may sound familiar. Justice Bhandari was also on the bench for the Kulbhushan Jadav case. And this time, he's voted against Russia. India has been quick to distance itself from this vote. New Delhi says that Justice Bhandari has voted in his individual capacity and that the vote is not a reflection of India's position. Interesting. That's not how Ukraine sees it. But let me tell you what the court order said before we get to the reactions. The court is profoundly concerned about the use of force by the Russian Federation in Ukraine, which raises very serious issues of international law. The Russian Federation shall immediately suspend military operations that it commenced on February 24, 2022 on the territory of Ukraine. Russia should stop the attack. That's what this court is saying. Russia has rejected the ruling. Ukraine, though, is calling it a big win. This victory uh, is the victory of the international law and the international or, or law order. And this is the victory for each and every Ukrainian who is now suffering from the Russian aggression. And of course, it is a huge victory for our brave soldiers who are now uh, trying to uh, push Russia back from our territory. And of course, this is the victory in the memory of each and every Ukrainian who died during this aggression. We, we are very grateful for the court for such a behavior and for such a strong decision. 
strong decision, says Ukraine. Rulings of the ICJ, we must tell you, are binding. But the court has no direct way to enforce them. So on paper, it is a win for Ukraine. But on the ground, this is what the picture looks like. These are satellite images of the devastation in Ukraine. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.